Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the worship service of the United Presbyterian Church here in Yardville. We're so glad that you're joining us from wherever you are, and we hope that the Lord will be glorified in all that's done here. Our pastor, Pastor Rob Morrison, is away on a much needed three week vacation, and we're really privileged this morning to have as our guest preacher, Sambi Santos, who's pastor of Vida Nueva Church that meets in our sanctuary uh, uh, later today. And her daughters will be giving us some special music, which uh, Sambi will introduce later on. So we're really looking forward to that. So we have a special day today. And we thank again Marilyn, who's our our constant in music, and Ben and Dan, who are our constant in uh, making a video of all of this. So thank you all. We have a tradition in many of our churches of a call to worship that's often taken out of the Psalms. And the uh, selections from Psalm 107 are on the, your screen right now. And what we're gonna do, I'll do the part that says leader. And I want the congregation here and all of you out there in video land uh, to say the part that is uh, that says for people. So let's call to worship using the words of the psalmist. Give thanks to the Lord for he is good. Let us give thanks to the Lord for his unfailing love. And his wonderful deeds for his people. For he satisfies the thirsty. And the hungry with good things. Praise be to the Lord. Now, as a praise song to follow that, there's a simple little song. I want to tell you why I picked it. Years ago, we were visiting our professor friend up in Vermont, and their son had just received the news that at six years old, he was going to have his second bout with leukemia. And at that time, that was not good news, usually fatal news. And yet it got to be time that we were going to eat together. And this, the family, family of deep faith, sang this song, one verse that you say, he gives us food, he gives us friends, he gives us love, he's so good to us. To me, that has been a lifelong image of faith that goes deeper than the worst things that life can give us. So we wanna sing this together. Let's try it in the first verse, it's very simple. And maybe I'll stop if you're not loud enough after that one to make us a little louder. Let's start singing, God is so good. Okay, sit up in your beds, get up, stand up out there. Let's all stand up here and sing the second and third verses. Let's, let's praise the Lord. We'll have a time of prayer now. We thank you that we have a God who invites us to share everything with him. Good, bad, angry, whatever. Open our hearts. He knows it all. So let's go before the Lord and pray for some concerns of this congregation and beyond. Let's pray together. Our dear loving Heavenly Father, 
we thank you that right now you're listening to every word and thought on our hearts. You love us completely. You know what is best for us for all eternity, and we thank you. Give us the heart to believe that you love us like that, that you listen to us like that. So we share with you, dear Lord, some of the people within our own congregation that are really hurting right now. We pray for Carol H Haberling in hospice, for her and her dear husband, Pete, that you will give them strength and peace. We pray for our dear sister, uh, Terry Wagner, who's struggling with a stage four cancer. Oh, dear Lord, just surround her with your everlasting arms of love. We pray for Richard Vandegriff, Tom and Sue Lanning, Carol and Al D'Amico, Dick and Carol Johnson, and Pam and Dan Rose. Lord, you know down to the very core of their being what they need now, and we pray for your perfect eternal will to be done in each of their lives. But do you know that you love everyone in this congregation, but your, your love extends far beyond us to the entire world that is suffering now from the coronavirus. We just pray, dear Lord, for those who are ill, that you will give them strength and healing. For those that we have lost through this, that you will comfort the families. For those in places where the virus is spiking, we ask for protection and wisdom for all of how they should conduct themselves. And dear Lord, our country is suffering through protests for injustices that have gone on for far too long. Dear Lord, we ask for wisdom for our leaders to address these injustices. And we ask for wisdom for the protesters to avoid violence. Dear Lord, we just ask for power for our Pastor Santos this morning. Come upon her in a special way. Let her be a vehicle of the Holy Spirit to touch us, to challenge us, to help us to grow, to be more like Jesus Christ. We pray all these things in his name. Amen. Hallelujah. Blessings, brothers and sisters. It is an honor for us to be able to share the service with you guys today. But before I go ahead and share the message that the Lord has placed in my heart for every single one of you, I would like to take this moment and welcome my daughter, Janice, Amaya, and Faith onto the stage where they will be performing um, a worship dance for our God with the name of Waterfall.
I just want to take a moment and say thank you to all of you. It is an honor for us to be here today. And the fact that you guys have not only just opened up your hearts, but opened up your house, your house of worship for every single one of us to a young Latino congregation to be able to worship here on Saturday nights. It is an honor and a privilege to be here before you guys today um, as your amigos and your familia in Christ. It is a privilege that we truly do not take lightly. Um, as Pastor Rob is away on a very much deserved vacation, we pray that the Lord not only keeps him safe, but he is able to enjoy every single day that he is away and the Lord continues to bless him greatly and he is able to create epic memories so that he can laugh with his family for many more years to come. I am here today with my family, my husband and partner in crime, my husband Carlos Santos and my daughters Genesis, Maya and Faith, whom you just saw um, performing their worship dance earlier. And before anybody asks, because I get this question all the time, are you going to have a boy? Is there a boy? I'm just going to pause right there and I'm just going to say that I have a very loving little boy with four little legs and a furry tail waiting for me at home and that is all that I need. He is the love of my life. Just don't tell my family that because they might get a little jealous. But before we continue, because I know that I, I value your time very, very much and I know your time is very valuable. I want to make sure that I go straight into the word. Um, I know that the Lord has placed a word in my heart and I trust that it ministers your heart as well this evening. Um, this word is actually one that I'm pretty sure you guys have heard many times before, but it ministered my heart in a different way this week and I would like to share that with you guys today. So um, I will be speaking today out of the book of Matthew chapter 14. If you would like to follow on the word with me today, out of, you know, for the sake of story keeping, we are right that right at this very moment of the story, we are at a very moment where John the Baptist was beheaded and Jesus was obviously upset. He was a little sad because he was as human as you and me, and he wanted to find the moment to grieve. So he was traveling along the way, but the crowds kept following him. Um, and that's when right there in the story, we find that miracle where he fed over 5,000 people with five loaves of bread, right? Like it was just incredible. So this is the very moment where we are at at the story. Matthew chapter 14, verse 22 through 31, if you would like to read along with me. Amen. And the word of the Lord reads, Immediately, Jesus made the disciples get into a boat and go ahead of them to the other side, while he dismissed the crowd. After he had dismissed them, he went up to the mountainside by himself to pray. Later that night, he was alone, and the boat was already at a considerable distance from land, buffeted by the, by the waves because the wind was against it. Shortly before dawn, Jesus went out to them, walking on the lake. When the disciples saw him walking on the lake, they were terrified, terrified. It's a ghost, they cried out. But Jesus immediately said to them, take courage. I feel that the Lord is saying that to us this season. Take courage, take courage, and do not be afraid. Lord, if it is you, Peter replied, tell me to come on the water. Come, Jesus said. Then Peter got down from the boat, and he walked on the water and came towards Jesus. But then he saw the wind, and he was afraid, and he began to sink. He began to sink, and he cried out, Lord, save me. Lord, save me. How many of you have cried out, Lord, save me in this season? I know I have. Immediately, Jesus reached out his hand to him and caught him, and he said to him, you of little faith, why did you doubt? Why did you doubt? Why did you doubt? Lord, I am your humble servant today, Father. And Lord, as I speak today, and I share, Lord, the word that you have given me, I ask you, Father, that you empty me of me completely. 
My Lord, I ask you at this very moment that you empty me of all anxiety, of all nerves, and that you fill me up with your Holy Spirit. And that every single word that comes out of my mouth is one that comes straight out of your heart. And it is able to impact every single person watching us today. Lord, you know their hearts more than anything. You know the seasons that they are traveling through. But Lord, I believe in my heart that this word that has been given to me, Father, will be one, Father, that will be impacting their hearts today by the power of the Holy Spirit and reminding them today, my Lord, that they too were created to walk on water. Please minister every single one of the hearts watching here today and transform as you best do. In the name of Jesus, I thank you because I know that you are here and I know that you are working in us and through us. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Amen. I find it honestly so very ironic that we are meeting here today and we are talking through Facebook, through Facebook because of everything that is going on. And ironically, it is the same social media platform that reminded me of something that my family and I endured about 10 years ago. So about 10 years ago, my family and I did something completely unexpected, something that no family would normally do. At that point in time, I had just given birth to Faith. Faith was about two and a half months old. And the Lord had been speaking very heavily into our hearts and had placed into our hearts a need that a country was in and a group of people specifically. So he placed in our hearts the need for us to pick up our family and go abroad to a completely different country, a completely different continent, a language that two of my daughters didn't even speak fluently, but we believed in the Lord and we loved the Lord. So we were obedient to his voice and we followed, sort of like Peter walking on that water. Um, we followed, we went. Faith was like, once again, she was about two months old. We left everything, absolutely everything that we had. We gave away our cars, we gave away our house, everything that we owned, we picked up our essentials and we moved across to a completely different country, obeying the voice of the Lord. Mind you, this is a place where I, many would consider to be a third world country. It did not have stable electricity. There was no running water. There were no dishwashers and there were no electric laundry. So I'm pretty sure that my ladies watching could know how hard that was on every single one of my fingernails. It was hard, but we praised the Lord and we had a great time. We were able to see the power of the Lord moving in us and through us, transforming the lives all around us. It was amazing. It, it really was like a moment where we were just like Peter walking over that water, just seeing how the Lord was providing all around. It was incredible. And just around that same time, I was with my three girls. There was a moment where Faith was approximately about four months old and she fell very sick, like very, very sick. And it was an overnight type of thing, sort of like that wind that just shifted overnight. Um, and we were a little scared. We took her to the doctor, the doctor examined her and he said, it's a virus, it's gonna go away. You know, when you, take, when you would take your kids to the doctors and they're like, it's a virus, it's gonna go away. So we trusted, we trusted, we went home, but the very next day, she got worse. She got a whole lot worse. And mind you, we were a missionary family. We did not have a lot of money that way, but we trusted the Lord. So we picked up everything that we had and we went into a private clinic where they began to examine her. They began to run tests and a lot of things on her. And I remember at that time, the doctor came in and his eyes were a little red. He couldn't even see us face to face because he knew that the diagnostic was very serious. Um, and he says to us, your daughter, your baby girl, who is not quite four months old yet, she has a bacteria that is eating through her intestines and is just getting worse by the minute. And there's not much that we can do. There's not much, mind you, we had walked all over the country with our girls. We had, you know, I, I was as cautious as I could be. I would walk around with my hand sanitizer. I packed enough of those. So in my head, I was doing the right thing. Um, but we were walking in faith. And even when I could see the Lord 
transforming the Lord, healing the Lord, doing all of the miracles that He did in us, in us and through us and all around us. There was that one moment where my world was shaken, where I could see nothing but darkness. At that moment when the doctor said to us, there's nothing that we can do. I remember turning to my husband, as a desperate mom would, and I turned to him and I grabbed him by his shirt and I said, send me back. Send me back right now, send me back. And I was crying and so was he. But he had this calm voice within me, within him and he hugged me and he said to me, Samia, the same God that could heal her back in New Jersey is the same God that can perform that miracle right now, like today. Brothers and sisters watching, that moment was like a cold bucket of spiritual water like poured over me. Like, you know, when you're watching on TV and like, you know, somebody's like losing their minds and somebody gets that bucket of water and just throws it on themselves so they can snap out of it. You know that moment? That's the moment that I had, except it was purely spiritual. But instead of it being like poured over me like a little bit of water, it was like slammed. Like, girl, react right now. Like, right, right now. You and I, we belong to Christ. You and I, you and I have been walking by faith. You and I know the miracles that the Lord performs in us and through us. You and I are here right now because the Lord has kept us. Yet, we're in a season of darkness. And because we cannot see what is right before us, we fear. We fear. And I felt at that moment that I was like Peter. But instead of me walking on water at that moment, I was sinking. I was drowning and I felt that everybody around me was drowning too. And there was nothing that I could do. And then the Lord, through my husband, I praise God for that moment. Woman of little faith. Of little faith. Or I, I, I was literally holding Faith. Her name is Faith and she was very little. But spiritual faith. Like, have you not seen what I can do? Have you not seen all that I have done all around you? What is going on? And that was the moment where it clicked. And I literally went in my head, you know, like a picture of like a little kitten into like a lioness. And I took my position in Christ. You know how like in those movies from like, Iron Man, and it just began to click. And I began to put on my armor, just like it says in the book of Ephesians chapter six, that, you know, that armor of Christ. And I began to put on my helmet, and I began to put on my spiritual belt, and I knew that I was in a position where I had to fight. And it wasn't a fight where I could like pick up my fist and just kind of like punch somebody, but it was a spiritual type of fight. My family was in danger. Everything around me was in danger. But I knew that the Lord that had called us, he was going to deliver us. And I knew that it was a, a season where I had to fight by faith. I had to walk by faith. I had to move by faith. Even when I couldn't see what was going on before me, even when I couldn't understand what was going on, I had to trust that the Lord that had called us in this season, the Lord that has called you this season, watching us to be that disciple to those around us, he was going to deliver us through these hard times. So I put on my armor. And let me just tell you that I fought like I never fought in my life before. Mind you, this was also a time where a year before Miss Faith was born, I had lost a baby. So it was a very rough moment. But again, her name is Faith Eliana, which means that by faith, the Lord had answered our prayers. And if the Lord had answered my prayers, I knew sure as well that he was not going to take her away from me just like that. So I picked up my full spiritual armor and I fought with all that I could. And I prayed and I interceded and I laid my hands on her and I moved my faith by faith for hours and hours. I remember that I was alone that whole night with faith. My husband had to go back to the house that we were renting so then he can take care of our other two. 
So I prayed and I interceded and I declared the whole night, the whole night, breaking away chains. Like it was a spiritual battle. Like you have no idea. Like I said before, I was that lioness. She cried and began to fall asleep around five o'clock when the nurse came in with her lab, you know, her lab work, just like every other nurse in any clinic or hospital. And she is trying to find her vein to do her routine blood work, but Faith, she was so weak and, and so fragile at that moment, it was a little hard for her to find it. She finally found it and I praise God, she left, I kept fighting. I kept fighting and I kept fighting and I was like, Lord, you gave her to me, I trust you. Lord, you called me here, I trust you. Lord, you redeemed me and restored me in this season, I trust you. Lord, my daughters, they are the gift that you send me, I trust you. I am trusting you with all that I have, I trust you. Nurse comes back at seven o'clock with the same lab work and I'm giving her a face like, okay. And she's like, Miss Santos, I am really sorry, but there seemed to have been a mistake um, or, or some sort of error with the samples that I drew. And I remember inside of me, I was really tired, mind you, but I wanted to snap at her like, are you kidding me? Are you kidding? But the Holy Spirit spoke straight into my heart, loud as day. And he said, Samia, be still. Samia, be still. You know those moments when you feel the voice of the Lord speaking into your heart? He says, like, be still, because I'm working. You see, you do not see what is going on, and things are a little shaky in your head, but I am working. If you just trust for one more second, one more second, I am working. So I obeyed the voice of the Lord, and I stood still. She left. Faith stayed sleeping, and I kept praying and praying. One hour later, like clockwork, 8 o'clock, the same nurse comes in with two doctors. And I never forgot their faces. They were pale, pale. And they looked so puzzled, and they had a whole bunch of paperwork in front of them. And they're like, ma'am, if you could please sit down for one second. And I'm there like, oh my gosh, like, I'm still trusting you. Like, I'm not going to listen. I'm not going to listen. But I was in my head, like, fighting. I'm not, I'm not going to listen to whatever they say, because they look like they're not going to give me good news. But I'm trusting you. So I sat down, and I'm holding faith. And they were like, so this is the blood work that you brought in. This is the blood work from three days ago. This is the blood work from yesterday. And this is the blood work from this morning. And it does not match. It doesn't match. According to this blood work right here, your daughter has nothing. According to this blood work right here, she's about to die. And there's absolutely nothing that we could have done. But according to this one right here, there's nothing in her digestive system. There is no bacteria in her intestines. Her immune system seems to be great. There's nothing. And their words still echo in my head. It must have been a miracle. And they just echoed, it must have been a miracle. It must have been a miracle. I, I really felt in that moment, it was just like Peter. I was like, woman of little faith. It, it was beyond the miracle. Honestly, I, I'm not a bit oblivious to everything that is going on in the world today. Brothers and sisters, right now, we're in a season where we are fighting a health crisis. We are fighting an economic crisis. We are fighting a social crisis. And the world is in need of a miracle. The world is in need of somebody who will step up in faith, just like Peter. You, you watching. The world is in need for us to step out in faith and put on the armor of Jesus Christ and say, you know what? I may not understand everything that is going on around me, but I trust the God that has called me. I trust the God that has kept me. I trust the God that has provided for me even when I couldn't even figure out how to feed myself. I trust the God. I trust the God that has kept my family safe. I trust the God that has provided that peace in my heart. I am trusting that God today. 
I am trusting that God. Even in times of uncertainty, even in times when we cannot understand what to say or what to do. This is the time and this is the season where the Lord is calling you and I to stand up in our faith and do the work that he called us to do and be his arms and feet and be his mouth and be his walking heart all over this world and be able to provide words of hope and words of love to every single person out there in so much need. So much need. Miss Faith, she, she was a physical faith, but I didn't understand that that moment that both my physical faith and my spiritual faith, they were in need of a hero. And I had to stand up in faith even when I didn't think that I could. And I had to believe in the Lord that had called me and be that hero. Even when I didn't have the strength, even when I didn't have the anything in my head, I had to stand up and fight. The Lord is calling you and I to fight, not physically, but spiritually, for our brothers and sisters who are right now in pain, who are right now in hospitals dying, who are right now in despair, without hope, in so much need. The Lord is calling you and I to walk upon those waters by faith and not by sight, to stop seeing the things that are all around us and trust the God that is within us, that he is greater, that he is stronger, that he is able to provide for us everything that we need and for us to walk and do his will on this earth. We are in this season for a reason. I'm sorry, but I don't believe in coincidences. And I don't think that you're watching me today out of a coincidence either. The Lord needs you, brave people just like you, to stand up and be able to spread the words of hope and love that this world needs. Amen. I'm just going to say a prayer at this moment right there where you are. And I do not know the season that you have been living in or living through. I do not know what is going on around you. But if you could just close your eyes, I know that the Lord is doing something marvelous around this time. Lord, I am here today with my brothers and sisters, Father. And Lord, surely enough, we are living a very uncertain time. Uncertain time, but you are a very certain God. My Lord, you are our rock. You are our constant. You are that thing, Lord, that never changes. So Father God, I ask you that every single person watching today, let you be their rock today, Lord. Let you ignite that fire in them and through them. Let you, Lord, ignite that fire of love and of hope and of peace that they need in their hearts today. I ask you, Lord, that you surround them with your love in such a way, Father, that it will overflow and that every single person connected to them, my Lord, they will also be impacted, Father, by your love and your peace and your grace tonight. I thank you, Lord, for every single person watching because I know that you have a purpose for their lives. And I know that at this time, Lord, you are working in them and through them, transforming them for your glory so that they too, Father, can go out there into this world and be your disciples as we were called to be and share your gospel with all of those people in need. Lord, I thank you once again for all that you are doing in this season for it is for a reason. We trust in you and we praise your name. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Amen.